That's the biggest thing I think I've built on my senior year is the relationship aspect of football. I feel like if that that Los Gatos team went on to a high school team, like all together, <laughs> there's no way we would not go to state like every year. Like it was crazy. First coach I called when I decided to become a quarterback was Dante. He came to the local park and started running stuff with me, working on play actions, reading and all that stuff. So he kind of brought me into that. My dad probably had better attendance than 90% of my team at practices. For me, if I think I'm, I thought I was supposed to be here recruitment wise and I didn't get what I wanted, but now I have this chip on my shoulder like, okay, there's all these schools now that like, you talk to me here, you talk to me this and you don't want me, so that's fine, that's cool, but San Diego State did want me. He was just chilling there and he's like, Parker, don't think too much, just do your thing, like be an athlete, like yeah. take this game over, do your thing. We're at Ike Sandwich, waiting for our sandwich. Just did a uh, hour long interview with Parker Three. We're hungry. I'm hungry. Manalo's hungry. Hope you guys like the segment. Get Sports Focus is brought to you by Summit Partners, leaders in growth equity investing. Weightsandbars.com. Build your home gym and shop locally from the Bay Area's best fitness equipment experts. Ike's Love and Sandwiches. Championship level sandwiches every single time. South Bay Construction, a reputation built on trust. And by Fuel Good, fueling your success. Conveniently located in Santa Clara off Homestead Road. For more info, go to fuelgoodmealprep.com. GSF Weekly, we got Parker Street in the house. Yep. Uh, beautiful setup. <laughs> Super rad. We are at Active Space Training. This is where professionals train. It's kind of a brand new place. Jacob back there in the office is uh, handling business right now, but we are thrilled to have Parker here at yeah. this facility. Uh, this is more about Parker, but I do got to do my intro for sponsors. Um, I want this to be more of a conversation. Yeah. Not exact. Not not like me asking you questions. No, of so if course, you have any yeah. questions, I got just you, yeah. just throw it. I'm gonna take this off so I can hear you better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it, it's been a while since since we've done this i think we did this when you were a sophomore yeah when you were a junior and now yeah you're a senior yeah it's spring season track mm -hmm. season i'm gonna shut up now and <laughs> yeah. you talk yeah it's what's going on time. what's been going on with you nothing much i mean after last season i kind of just got into training pretty quickly um i was still trying to fix the recruiting process because i wasn't getting much towards the end of when our season ended we didn't get to go to playoffs so I kind of just grinded there, just kept training, and then um, kept sending the messages I normally send to coaches. And then eventually I got, I got called by Wyoming and got that first PWO, and that kind of kick-started a little bit in the Mountain West. Um, I was super excited about that because that was a school that showed interest to in me early, and I had the coach's number, the running back coach. And then um, once that happened, he, he wanted me to come play offense, and that's the one school I was looking at. So it was they wanted me to come play offense, and I'm an offensive player. Um, so a lot of schools want me at defense. And that's something I've noticed too, especially talking to a lot of coaches. It's like, with me, it's it's like I guess it's a good problem to have, but nowhere knows nobody knows where to put me, placement wise, whether that's defense, offense, quarterback, running back. Um, so that's become kind of like an issue for me. But at the same time, it's a blessing in disguise as I can play anywhere. Um, but once that happened, I got uh, UNLV came to visit me at school. That was super cool. And then San Jose State with the new coaching staff. Miss Perez, the new director of player personnel, called me up. And then, but the one I've always wanted for a long time was San Diego State. Um, it's just a great school, great location. I want to stay in California, close to home, but not too close. Um, Education is great. Um, so when that school came, they came to visit me. They talked to me, Coach Sal, Coach Thurm, Coach Diaz, and they did a really good job at communicating that. And the biggest thing is them is they, uh, made a really big effort in trying to make me feel comfortable with my decision because they understand my position and all that. And Coach, uh, Coach Zach Barton made the biggest impact on me right away, more than any recruiter has ever made on me, is he came in and most, I have to like kind of sell the idea that I'm open to any position. And of course, I, want, I have preferences. I want to play offense. I want to play quarterback. But I have to sell that because I know in order to get recruited, you have to give them what they want. But Coach, the second I started acting like, I have like a script. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm open. I'm open-minded. Coach Barton immediately was like, just tell me what you want to do. Like, if you want to play quarterback, I want you to come in and compete at that quarterback spot. And that's that's kind of what I've gone from there. He made the effort to call my dad, made the effort to talk to my coaches more, and set that up. And it really just came down. They had to get their uh, 
athletic and academic person to check out my transcripts. Once that, once that figured out, then I was all set. So really, that's all I've been doing since then, training a lot. Track season just started. That's been a big thing right now, but, but yeah. Well, it, it didn't just start, it's wrapping up, right? Yeah, for me, it feels like it just started, though, because I pulled my hamstring, like, after the mini meet. Oh. So I only got to run twice. And, um, right after my mini meet, I PR'd in the mini meet, my second meet of the season, with a 10-9-6, and then pulled my hamstring. I was out for, like, a month. And then my first meet back was the Stanford Invitational, and I hadn't done starts or anything like that. So that was rough, but I got to compete, and that was fun. And then, but yeah, I'm coming back. So to me, it feels like the beginning, but it's really, it's really wrapping up right now. We have CCS Top 8 on Saturday and all yes. that. Yes, yeah. I am planning to be there. It's at Los Gatos, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, so that, that should be a good one. Yeah. Um, I, I know track is like something that a lot of football players do. Talk about how that helps you as a football player. Yeah, track's like a big individual sport, I'd say. So it's a big difference from football. Like football, you have the pressure of the team and you have the pressure of what the coaches and players are looking out of you. But track really like makes you kind of look inward and focus on things yourself. Cause you can go out to practice. It's really loose and stuff. The coaches are there to coach you if you want to be coaches and they're going to give you as much effort as you give to them. But uh, it really puts a lot of pressure on yourself in the way that you kind of have to go on your own time and focus on what you want to work on. And, it's kind of a, a cool cool down from football season. Just I'm not having to go out there and, and be a leader in a sense. I'm just a leader of myself and I just have to focus on myself. And then of course the speed aspect. There's a lot to football that you, you can have great speed, all this stuff, but track really helps you tone in on that stuff. So it doesn't teach you the horizontal quickness and stuff like that. But once you get into open field and you can kind of open up your stride a little bit, you're kind of learning all that stuff in track. And along with that, a big thing for football and I think all sports is just confidence. And if you can go out and track and compete at a high level and show confidence in a sport that, for me, it's not my main sport, it's my secondary sport, and I can still compete at a high level, it gives me a lot more confidence on the football field to know that I'm not just fast here, I'm fast like in the like speed realm. So that's the biggest thing, confidence and stuff like that. I like that. I like that answer. Um, I think there's a lot of kids out there that's going to see this, and they're going to take your advice. They're going to get involved with track right after football season. Um, but also seven on seven, I think, is something that you were a part of. Yeah. So Parker played for our seven on seven team, and if anybody were to ask, like, who, who, who do you cover? What is Get Sports Focus? That's a common question. Who do you guys cover? And like, what are you guys all about? I feel like Parker is like the perfect athlete to point to. It's like, who do we cover? We cover Parker. <laughs> That's why he's my nephew. There we go. <laughs> I, I start calling him my nephew. But no, I appreciate you being part of our, our, our group. Uh, it was fun. We, we had a lot of great time. Um, it was definitely a learning experience. But talk about how that, you know, helped you stay in that competitive mode. Because you were doing yeah. track as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah. baseball at one point. Baseball my sophomore year. You, I believe you called my dad... Um, I was in the car with him. He called me my like sophomore, sophomore after my sophomore season, and about me coming and playing quarterback and trying out. And um, I was super stoked from the get go because I had watched all your guys' stuff before and seen you guys cover. Um, but sevens, I've, I've been missing it right now, honestly. Like it, it's, I miss going to the practices and showing up on the weekends, just having that thing to go for. And a lot, big part of it is like I'm meeting kids from all over in sevens, like my Oak Grove friends. Like I see them in the All Star games and I see them around. I mean, I'll see them when I'm just out with my friends, and it's just cool to have that bigger community that you build. I think the more things you do, you build that community and kind of just grows you as a person with more competitors. Um, but it's a lot of fun, especially if you can get your like teammates out there to do stuff with you. So you're growing in that aspect. It just builds chemistry and all that stuff. But along with that is you guys have really helped me like, like I was super quiet my sophomore year. Like I, I, I'm like, I was locked in. Like most people probably thought I was a jerk to be honest. Like I'm quiet, I do with my own stuff, but it kind of forces you to open up when you're with new teammates from all over the place and you kind of have to be a quarterback to them as well, not just the people you go to school with every day, because that's easy. But it's, it's kind of just embracing that diversity that Sevens brings along and learning new offenses and all that stuff. But it, it was really fun. I miss it a lot. Yeah, it, it, we had a pretty good team. I think the only thing we were missing was uh, we didn't – Everybody was so busy that we couldn't really practice. Yeah. So the tournaments were the practices, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> a lot of these seven teams that we're playing are like, it's kind of their whole identity. Like yeah. th these are seven teams that are like, oh, we're, we're getting ready for seven seasons all year round. Like that's their thing. Their social media pages, it's sevens. All this stuff is sevens. We're just a bunch of 
football players who can ball out. You put us in 11 on 11 where we actually have to tackle and make plays when it's real football, but you put us on the sevens field, we're still going to do our thing, um, but it's just not our like main thing at the time. We're getting ready for, like Coach Dante talked about all the time, we're getting, we're, this is practice for when it actually matters, the 11s opposed to these other teams. I feel like it's practice for sevens. So you're, they're learning different things to help yeah. them out sevens, but we're learning to get better at football. And I think it helped a lot of us out. Yeah, there were, I've been talking to a lot of parents and it seems like, like especially the young athletes that are up and coming, seems like parents are asking more about, are interested more about like, which team should we be a part of? Yeah. Instead of like, use this opportunity to be a better football player Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we've been preaching, and this, this, is, this started with your team because we had a, a, a pretty much an all-bell team, right? Yeah. When, when yeah. you jumped on board, uh, I think you were a sophomore going into junior yeah. season. So I've been promoting two high schools to form their own team. Yeah. So we have our tournament on the 28th. It's the Super Team 7, and no seniors allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. No we used to have a lot of seniors, but yeah. we were going to have you guys come back. Yeah. But So this is no seniors. But check this out. We have Alameda High School okay. forming a team. Obviously, we have Gunderson High School yeah. forming a team. Your boys from Bellarmine yeah. forming a team. Boys from Oak Grove forming a team. I believe Santa Teresa is going to form a yeah. team. And then we have like six other teams uh, that actually competed throughout the year. One from Reno one from like Cardinal Newman. Yeah. It, was, it was awesome. And, and I think it's now a lot of coaches are embracing it. Yeah, I mean, when I see that with set sevens tournaments and I see, I see these teams that look like the coaches go in the plays, I see all the players in like their high school shirts. I mean, that's like the main thing. Cause like I said, it's, it, you're getting ready for 11s. It's, it's not a whole separate season. Like, I mean, there's a lot of kids who will go out and think it's like a big um, chance to get recruited and stuff like that. But really you get recruited in, in football. You need film for that. Sevens, I mean, a lot of kids will ask me too, like, what do you recommend? And I'm like this. I'm like, you know what? Like, it's with your team. Get with your team as best you can. Because all this is building up to the seven, to the 11 on 11 season. And if you can, like, master the stuff with your team and all that, I mean, that's all you need. You don't need to go off to some random team where it's just you and you might be getting in, like, every once in a while with all these other kids. Because, I mean, that's not doing anything for you. I mean, if you want to do stuff like that, go train on your own in that aspect. Don't waste your time learning a whole separate offense, a whole separate defense. That's not gonna really relate or correlate to anything you're doing in a couple months, so. Yeah, but honestly though, I've seen this, to, to some individual athletes, sevens is, their, is, it, is it for them. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, not to downplay any program or any area or anything like this, but it, it's, it's true, I mean, Bellman is in the WCAL. It's a high caliber school. You guys compete against the best. You have CCS to worry about. You have state to worry about. You have NorCal to worry about. You have league to worry about. Yeah. And, you know, the big seven on seven tournaments is just, it, it's ac actually meaningless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to downplay what we're doing. We're, we're hosting tournaments, no, but yeah. I, I really, you know, we, we want to cater to the local teams out here, and I'm glad that it's growing that way. It's super cool to see. Like, I'm seeing all these teams, like you just said, the fact that all these teams are coming as their team, like, that's a cool thing. Yes. It branched from somewhere, so. Yeah. yeah. Talk about some of the coaches that you've worked with. Uh, I know you have quarterback coaches, yeah. uh, trainers, and, yeah. and, and individuals. Yeah, um, I started working with my QB coach, Drew Brown. He just signed a new contract for the CFL as a starting quarterback. Um, I started working with him, I believe, my like late freshman year. I got recommended to him by something. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been super fun. Drew, Drew is like one of those coaches who like not only can just teach you what you're doing, but he can show you. So he'll be out there with us when we're all competing and he's out there slinging the ball. The best, I've, I've honestly never seen someone throw a football like Drew can throw. Um, but he's really progressed my game and when he went to Canada he was training up there and I wasn't able to get with him like I was like three times a week usually so he would get on calls with me and zooms and go over like the more mental side of football so he'd go over plays with me go over coverages and all that so that's really opened up my mind and another thing that he did is towards my end it used to be a lot of individual sessions when I was younger but towards the end um, last year or so when I was training with him he'd get us in big groups so big shout out to Sedanio and all these guys, Jonah, um, Shane, who transferred to Los Gatos, all these guys as we've trained with, um, 
And it like puts us in that competitive environment where you're never really just throwing by yourself. You have to be able to compete when you're throwing with other people. And it kind of pushes you to do better. Like Cedeno, great quarterback, really good quarterback. Throws the ball just as good as I've seen anybody throw the ball. And it's super cool to see how he's progressed and how I've progressed together and how we're able to compete together. Shane, I've seen Shane come so far when I first met him to now. So much confidence gained from him and all this stuff. And now that Jews moved to Oklahoma, I started finding new people to train with. And he recommended Oliver. Um, I've been training with Oliver. He's been with DT. He knows hybrid. Um, but like I said, he's super, super good. And Drew recommended him, and he's very similar to me in the aspect, like, he's an athlete out here playing quarterback. So a lot of the stuff we're doing is translating into the athletic side of it. And I've been training with him. I'm throwing with him three times a day. I have three times a week, and I have a session with him later today as well. But his sessions are great. I mean, it's two and a half hours usually, and it's just the same thing. Me and Jonah, the MIDI QB, just training back and forward for hours on end, just working the same little things over and over again. And it's been super cool. Um, but yeah, all this stuff has made a big impact on me quarterback wise, just confidence and all that. So we're going to dip back to a few years back when you were a young Pop Warner player. Yeah. Your dad actually pitched me the idea of um, talking about it, feature, maybe even doing a feature. Maybe this is it. Yeah. We'll, we'll start with this. Uh, talk about your team when you were playing, is it the Los Gatos Longhorns? Los Gatos Longhorns. Talk about that team, the individuals on that team, maybe some of the coaches on that team. And because it seems like that group was a very, very talented group. That was a crazy group. I mean, we talk, I talk about this all the time. I feel like if that, that Los Gatos team went on to a high school team, like all together, together. There's no way we would not go to state like every year. Like it was crazy. So we had me. I wasn't even quarterback at this time. Um, I was playing. I was like a Swiss Army knife. I was playing running back. I'm playing safety. I'm playing all over the place. And then we had at quarterback early on Jalen Thomas. Jalen Thomas, one of the best athletes I've ever met ever. Um, he was on that team. Complete baller. And then our quarterback after that was Aaron Knapp. Aaron Knapp, the St. Francis quarterback. Love that kid to this day. So good. And then him at quarterback, we had me, Jalen, and then we had Jackson Cahoon. Jackson Cahoon, complete nicest human being I've probably ever met. Like, solidly just a great football player, but his character, like, it's unmatched anyway. I remember I had a, my very first football game ever. I was in the Campbell Bears, and it was my first touchdown ever. I scored a pick six, 99 yards, and Jackson Cahoon was on the other team, Los Scottis Longhorns. And you could just see in the video some kid come and pat me on the back and say, good job. And that's just Jackson in a nutshell for you. But we all see Jackson now. He's balling out, getting the attention he deserves. And let's not sleep on his brother, Chase, as well, who's younger than Jackson, complete baller as well, also on the Longhorns team. And then we look at more defensive players, Jeremiah Lewis, who's on Wilcox. Jeremiah was a complete stud in Pop Warner. He's a stud now. But all these players, we had Scotty, who's a Los Gatos receiver as well. We had Spencer Berg who's now committed for lacrosse at Oklahoma. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's super cool. But all of us have done a good job in staying in contact and just like rooting each other on in the best ways we can. We see each other in the offseason. Um, I had Aaron come pick up a Bellman hoodie from me the other day because his girlfriend's brother is on a Bellman team, so he wanted to support. Um, I still text Jackson old pictures of us at uh, Disneyland. We went to the Pop Warner Super Bowl. But that, that team was really good. And we had some bunch of other kids who I don't know where they are now, but it was a really well team. I mean, they went to the Pop Warner Super Bowl at least three times, once with me. Um, but, yeah, that team was crazy. And then we had Dante. Dante. Coach Dante, the legendary yeah. Yeah. Coach Dante Fontilla. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, that's crazy. I I, I, imagine if you guys did stick together. Yeah. Would have... What, what? Yeah, the only people that stuck, it was just me and, me and Fisher at the same school now. Fisher's ball receiver back then. He's the yeah, Fisher's year, good. He's so, I, I like feel, I, I, I'm so bummed about how his high school career went because you see, like, little flashes of Fisher. You saw him in sevens. Like, he came out there. He, I don't think there's a ball within 10 yards of him that he won't go out and catch, throwing his body all over the field. But he's just gotten really unlucky with injuries um, every, every season. His freshman year, he got brought up, actually, freshman summer to go to varsity. He was going to play varsity that next year, but he got hurt again. Oh, um, but he's been hurt every year I of do his remember career. That. And it's, it's really tough to see because me and Fish have been like best boys for a long time since like I went to middle school with him and all this stuff. But it's really bummer to see. But he's a great athlete. He's still doing good. Um, but yeah. 
when when you look back at uh, those times like did you expect to be in this position right now you know i know we talked when you were a sophomore and yeah. and i remember asking you like what are your dreams and aspirations yeah. and what do you want to accomplish by the time you you uh, graduate from bellman and right now you're Pretty much a little over a month away from graduating. I know. What? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of scary. It's huh? crazy. Yeah. Um, how how much of the stuff that you set has gone has come true? For me, pretty much everything, minus my winning season my last year um, with football. But I mean, I got the most out of the season. I think like yes, we failed and we didn't win as many games as you want. But I've I've learned a lot from it. But when I was younger, I I won, I won goal like. Everyone's goal is the NFL, but I, I, my, my checkpoint for me was college. If I can get to college, I'll let it take from there. But right now, it's just getting to college, getting to school, helping it get me in and all that. And that was my goal for as long as I can remember. I didn't know I was going to be playing quarterback my, when I was in Pop Warner. I had no idea that was going to happen. Um, but I, I like control a little bit, so I like to be able to run when I want to run, throw when I want to throw. Um, but I got to say, it all came together. I, I always dreamt to play college football and I always believed I was going to play college football. I think that's a big thing. Like if you're around people, some people will say like, say you have a goal and somebody will be like, that's a big goal. You know how many little people make that. I mean, I have friends and family members and stuff like that um, who will say things like that too. Like they'll look down at your goal. Oh, that's really hard to do. But yeah. like, that's the thing. Like you can't, you got to think it's not because like when I look at it, it's like, like say I like a car, for example, right? If I like a Dodge Challenger, you feel like you can see Dodges everywhere. After you say you like something, you see it everywhere. Yep. <laughs> so if I say like I want to play college football and I want to do these things, I'm going to do things to get to that point. So I don't know. You just can't like doubt that. And I've always thought that I was going to be where I was going to be. So I'm here now. So. Well, we never doubted Parker <laughs> right from the get go. We're yeah. like, no, this kid's going to do so. It was frustrating, though, because you no. were yeah. he was not getting the attention that he truly deserves. But I do think that maybe the record had a lot to do with it, you yeah, know, sure. and Parker is the kind of athlete where you could have played football, cross country, <laughs> uh, basketball, yeah, definitely baseball, track. Uh, I'm pretty sure if this was like 15 years ago, no, yeah. you would have been one of those like four, four yeah. sport athlete. But nowadays, it's more like specializing. I, I, yeah. you, you did let go of baseball, right? And well, I mean, baseball was my... Baseball was like my life growing up. I started playing baseball when I was two. Um, going to my papa's house, had a batting cage in his backyard for me. Like that was my thing. I was playing 12 year old all-stars at eight years old. Like that was my biggest Man. thing. I was training all the time. My dad was chucking balls at me in Little League and the parents probably look at him like he's a psycho. But <laughs> I mean, that's my dad. I mean, he's super involved in sports, but yeah, baseball was my thing. But then COVID happened and mm. COVID kind of put a, it was, it's difficult to do anything at that time. Um, but I knew, I, that's when I decided like, oh, I wanna play quarterback and I knew how demanding the position is. And um, it required me to not only learn how to throw a football correctly, but like the whole other aspect of it. And it's a really hard thing to do. And then that break I took from playing baseball to freshman year was just a big break. And I couldn't really play freshman year because baseball season started at the same time football because of the yes. timing of it. So once I was done with football, I had to jump into baseball if I wanted to, and it's just not something I wanted to do. I wanted to get ready for my sophomore season. And then by the time I came back to baseball, I mean, I'm a sophomore, it's already been almost three years. It's just a big gap to take when you're yeah. trying to play a sport. And especially at Bellamin, um, the WCAL, mm. we have so many good baseball players on our team. Um, I mean, we have like four guys committed already. If not, there's probably more, but it's just a big gap to play. And once I didn't, another thing too, is it's really contradicting to football throwing a baseball yes. and all that stuff, the mechanics and all that. I noticed it immediately when I played my sophomore year. Um, but football is the path I wanted to take. It was pretty hard to let go of. Um, I was talking to my mom about this last night. Like She got a little teary-eyed about it almost. Like She watched my last baseball game but didn't really know it was my last baseball game. Oh, wow. I mean, that's, that really is, is tough for her, and it's tough for me. But football is where I want to be. And, and my papa passed away in 2018. Baseball is like our thing. It's like my big thing. So it's just like not something I can see myself doing anymore, but it, it's a bummer, but I'm super focused on football and a lot of kids are really focused on that sport. And if I want to like progress, how I want to progress in football, I feel like that's the best line for it. Just really hyper focusing on my talents there. Nice. Yeah. You mentioned your dad. Um, 
I've never, uh, he's one of the few dads that I know who is there every single time. Yeah. He's got his lawn chair. <laughs> you can count it, 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 whenever Parker has practice or whatever. You, just look around and you'll see his dad. <laughs> yeah. And I love that. No, yeah. You know, a lot of people say, oh, man, it's like, he's like a helicopter dad. It's like, no, dude, he just cares. No. He's treasuring yeah. the moment. Exactly. You know, and, and I know a lot of kids would want that. No, of course. But talk about your dad real quick. Talk yeah. about your parents and, the, yeah. and your family and the support yeah. that you get from them. It's kind of crazy to think about. I used to laugh about this with my football team, and we'd be in, like, team meetings with our coaches and stuff. And we'd laugh about how they can always look around and they know one guy's going to be. I mean, my dad probably had better attendance than 90% of my team at practices. Like, <laughs> my dad was there every practice. And he's still there. I remember I hurt my, my uh, MCL my junior year and I wasn't able to play in the Sacred Heart game. And um, my dad, I'm like, Dad, you don't need to go to that. I'm not going to be there. I'm literally just going to be standing on the sideline. And my dad's like, I'm, I'm like, oh, this might be the first game you're not going to go to. Like, ever. Like, that's crazy. Ever. And he's like, <laughs> Oh, shoot, that's right. So my dad showed up to the game in San Francisco. I was standing on the sideline just to say he was at the game. Um, this next year is going to be really tough for him. My dad's oh. going to be that, that, that weirdo standing on the fence like this, like <laughs> watching in. I know it, but I don't know. He's going to come down to a lot. Maybe not to be able to watch as many practices. You never know. He might do some crazy thing and just move down there to watch me. But growing up, he's always been the same. I, I used to uh, race BMX. Mm, and, that's right. Uh, yeah, I started that at five. That was a crazy, crazy part of my life. These guys all around, man. Racing BMX was, was, it was different. It was super demanding, five days a week, and traveling was super expensive because we had to go to all these different places to race, and it was expensive and stuff like that. But my dad was super demanding then. It was, I think once BMX ended for me is when my dad kind of shifted. Like, it was a lot stressful back then. Like, having, when I'm young and I'm playing a sport, and I did it at a high level, I was an expert, and I was... At competing in nationals, winning stuff. Wow. Like I won Disney Cup. I was competing with the best in the world, and I was doing like pretty well. I mean, we had sponsors. We had all this magazine stuff. GoPro was a sponsor and nice. all this stuff. And my dad, being on the sideline, always expected me to win. And that was super pressure for me at that young age because I'm like, I got to win this race. My dad, I'm driving home with my dad after this. And then, uh, but my dad was, I just didn't understand at the time. And really, I feel like pressure is a privilege. He tells me that all the time, like, most dads aren't doing this and my dad the reason he's so tough on me in sports is because he thinks so highly of me and he knows what i'm capable of my dad was a great athlete himself he's a two-time all-american in water polo went to pepperdine in hawaii and did all this stuff and i think he just sees a lot in me and he wants me to do that but once i got to football he kind of chilled out and kind of realized like if i just let him do his own thing he's like i have discipline and he's i'm gonna work out there um but that's been great for me and my mom has always been there for me as well Mom and dad, pretty much the same. My mom doesn't come all the practices because I have two younger brothers. I have a, yeah. I have a 16-year-old just turned 16, then I have an 11-year-old who's in sixth grade, and it's more difficult for my mom to have to mediate all that, <laughs> for sure. But my mom busy comes life. Out. Exactly. My mom comes out to all my games, all that stuff whenever she can. Does all the events, and she understands sports like no other. And my mom's super inspirational to me. My mom gets up at like 5:30 every morning to go run with the dogs. She, yesterday she ran and ran a hill. Like she wow. just does stuff like this on her own. She does these Spartan races now, which is so cool. I'm so proud of her. Like she goes to these Spartan really? races. Really? Nice. Okay. Yeah, she's an athlete. She didn't do much in uh, high school and stuff, but she's just, she's an athlete like that. She's a big runner, um, super into health. She's a vegan, all this stuff. So she's just super inspirational to me in that sense, to be able to handle her three kids, one of them going to college, the other ones are kind of a pain sometimes, and be able to <laughs> handle that and do all this athletic stuff on her own. And she's, she's like, honestly, probably like my best friend, realistically, like, I come home and I'm excited to see my mom talk to her. It's just like a cool relationship that we've built around this stuff. And, but yeah, my parents have been great for me. Wow. Yeah. I did, it all, well, there you go. That's where it came from. Yeah. I was going to ask you, where, where, where did all this come from? Yeah. His parents are ballers. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, WCAL, three-time varsity. Okay, first of all, let, let's run, run through the list. Three-time varsity player, CCS champ, right? Yeah. Yep. NorCal champ, CIF runner-up, all league. Mm -hmm. he, 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 you could check off a lot, a lot of that stuff. Um, you played against some very, very good athletes. Yeah. That I am projecting they're going to go on to play beyond college. Yeah. Talking about Jerry on Dickey, 
mix in. Uh, you played against Jalen Thomas. Jalen Thomas, yeah. yes. Played against him my freshman year. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of guys yeah. in the WCL that you played against. With. Yeah. Talk about, and not to mention, there's a bunch of the Sarah guys. Of course. Uh, yeah. Kind of run through the list of, of what it was like to play. Uh, let's start with Jalen. Yeah. What was it like to play against Jalen? Your junior year, you guys ended our season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got to play from three t against him three times. My freshman year, mm -hmm. that was a super buildup for me. I haven't seen Jalen in a while. Um, he was the quarterback at the time on the other team. That's right. We were up on them 7-0. And then Jalen got the ball, and they, uh, they scored one touchdown quickly. And they made adjustments to our offense, but we didn't make adjustments to them. And I don't think they threw the ball one time that game. I think Jalen was in quarterback, got the ball, and just ran all over us. They ended up beating us that game. So that was the first time I get him. And then junior year, that was the craziest football game, or sophomore year. I think it was junior. When we, when we beat them with the pick six? I think it was junior year, yeah. No, that was my sophomore year. No, it was sophomore, was sophomore year. Yes, year. oh, my bad, my bad, yeah, my sophomore, sophomore year. year where uh, Di Vittorio got the pick six. Craziest football game I've ever seen. Great athlete, that kid. Great, great athlete. That was the second time I got to see him. And then I played him in the All-Star games. Yes. And, I mean, Jalen's the best, best player on um, any time I play against him. So that was super, super cool. And I know Jalen, I'm not a big, I don't talk much when I play football. Like, I'm not a big, I don't chirp, I don't, I don't talk down to players, stuff like that. Jalen, though, Jalen <laughs> ha, has a confident mouth on him. But, I mean, he backs it up. So, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it, and he backs it up. But he never, he never says anything to me. But I remember the All-Star game, he got, a, he got a little comfortable sometimes. And I remember a couple times, like, he will tackle me, and then he throws the ball at my feet. And, I mean, I don't, I just rub off. I don't care. I know Jalen. I've known Jalen for a long time. But, I mean, each person has their own game. I respect it. He's confident and he plays confident. And I see him do a lot of things that are great. Now he's at San Jose State. He's going to be the same way. He's going to ball out there. And You're going to play each other? Probably. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's what, that, see, that's what I was thinking. I was like, at some point that's in crazy. your college career, yeah. you're going to play against these guys again. I'm going to play against them again. And it's going to be fun to see. Exactly. So, yeah. Now so you mentioned cool. the All Star game. Yeah. So you played in two All Star games. Yeah. Um, so the, the All-Star game that you were talking about was the Charlie Rudemeyer All-Star game. That was when I played against Jalen. Um, yeah. That must have been a great experience because, I mean, that was your final game. Final high final school school game. Final high school game. Yeah. You had. So gotta give, give us the highlights of that game. Yeah, that game was, that game was cool. Um, the buildup was fun. A lot of the same people from the GSF game. Um, and then that, that game, it was rainy, super rainy. Um, same as the GSF game. Yeah. It, it, was, it was cold. Um, but I played quarterback right next to Cedeno at the same time. It's kind of cool to see full circle. I trained with Cedeno, and then yeah, I come back yeah. and I play with him in these all-star games. And plus, he was on my team my freshman and half of my sophomore year at That's Bell, right. And then he transferred out. So it's kind of cool to come full circle and play with him my last two games. But that game was super cool. Um, I went five for five that game. Didn't throw much, but um, I made it work. And then I had two touchdowns on the ground. Could have been three, but one of them, one of them – I'll leave it at that. Could have been, should, should have been three. It should have been three touchdowns. Dang it. I know. But either way, we won. It was super cool. And then uh, the GSF game, that, that was super fun. I got to play with a lot of my sevens teammates again. Yes. In like an actual tackle environment, which I never got to do. So that was super fun. I got rung up that game pretty well. Yeah, with, you uh, did. There was one play. It was, it was a low snap, and I went to go pick it up. I got out of it, but I ran out. I had, I had Brooks. I had Jabari, and then I had Jaden Green, like, kind of cornered around me. And I was trying to get the first down, and I got it. But I had Brooks hit me from the side, Jabari ear hold me, and then Jaden stick me up. And it, I, the, All from Sarah. All from Sarah. Three great Sarah players, and then my head hit the ground. And then I, I sat there for a second, got up, walked on the sideline. I took a play out. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Put me back. <laughs> Were you really? Hey, I was concerned. I was yeah. like. <laughs> please check him out please check him out yeah. I remember radioing the the train I was like can you check out Parker yeah. number three like check him out like yeah <laughs> I, I don't know why he's out again but yeah yeah that that I don't know if I was I don't know if I was good I, I'm pretty sure I got a concussion right then yeah and, you, and that you, time I was because coach Dante even when he was giving me plays he, he's like are you good I'm like wait what'd you say he's like are you good I'm like no I'm good I'm good but then the play came when I was at receiver in the back of the end zone, ran a corner. I had a hitch on the outside corner. I was waiting for that corner to sit on the hitch, but the hitch was ran a 10 instead of five, so the corner sat back, so I had two guys covering me on my corner. I was expecting just the safety. And I came over for the corner, jumped up for the ball, 
and my legs kind of got swiped by the safety and then went up, slid out, didn't have anything based on just smacked my head on the ground. I was I out was for a little bit. right there yeah. at the back of the end zone with Coach Cordero, yep. and we looked at each other like, yeah. He, he, he's, he's out. Yeah. He, we can't have him yeah. back, back in. <laughs> yeah, I got up, and I'm, Sione was on my, one of my coaches my junior year. He was coaching the other team, and he came over. He's like, Parker, you're, you're done, dude. You're, you're done. He's like, walk me off the sideline. He knows my mom, so he's telling my mom things about it. But, yeah, that was the first, like, official concussion I've had, I oh, think. Oh, wow. I, I'm, I've probably had more, but that was just the biggest one because I had two pretty much that game. Basically, Man. hit my head twice. Um, but yeah, that helped me out. That helped me out for a little bit. But it was it was fun. I wouldn't take back anything. That game was awesome. Yeah, it was. It, we had we had stars in that game. And and you mentioned the the three Sarah guys. We we you played against them. Mm -hmm. And I actually asked Jabari. I was like, Do you guys hate him or something? <laughs> and they were like, No, he was right there. No, it, yeah. It's legal. We yeah, didn't go illegal. Him, I was like, Yeah, that's true. The hits there, take it. I'm never gonna. Yeah. I'll respect that no matter what. But you 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 got hit a lot of times yeah st francis yeah i mean mcclimans was a was a mess I, I guess i could say this now because you're done with bellman but yeah. i felt like it was parker against the wcal <laughs> like seriously i mean watching bellman play I, I i don't know what it was but it seemed like you you were the i don't want to say you were the only guy that was actually playing but i don't want to disrespect your, your no, teammates course, yeah. but it's just the level of effort that you can get from Parker is 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 different. And going back to your sophomore season, uh, who are the guys that you, you who, what can you remember as yeah. far as some of the great players that you went? Yeah. R.L. Miller, I mean, yeah. Joe Mixon. Yeah. Um, for me, Joe, Joe Mixon was a cool person to play against. I didn't get to play against him. I remember me being on the sideline and him chirping at me from, <laughs> from defense, which was funny. He's like, Parker, where you at? You the team needs you. I'm like, I'm, I just ignored him. And, uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm not a big chirper, but you can see like he was looking forward to playing me in the game, but it's, it's cool. Yeah. I look forward to playing other good players and they look forward to playing me. It's like a cool relationship I get to play. Like every time we play Sarah, I get so excited. I mean, it's, it's full of great players. Um, and every time I get to play them, I like to see what I can do against them. And we actually did pretty good this year. I mean, I don't know if a WCAL team had scored on them yet, and we yeah. got, we had, Did you throw that pass to Zay? Yeah, I threw two touchdowns. Yeah. Like Zay with that great catch yes. on Jaden. And then we had, uh, I threw a ball to Antonio Serenia yes. in the corner of the end zone on a rollout. I could have got a third one there, I think, at the end, but I kind of forced a ball in on a pick. Um, it was late in the game. We were getting beat up. My, one of my best friends, Morgan Flores, came in at running back. Um, he, play, he was on my team my freshman year. I, I threw him a couple. He was a baller freshman year, probably like, he was our best guy freshman year. I mean, great running back, super fast. He's got all in the bodybuilding. He's, like, super big. Nice. Got him to play our senior year. Um, I feel super bad because I got him to play, and he got his collarbone snap that oh. game. But, uh, but it was super cool to have him next to me, blocking for me. Just That kid's, like, one of my best friends. He's going to Chico State now. Um, but, yeah, it, it was cool playing against Joe Mixon and all of them. Jerry on, Jerry on, I remember my junior year, first game of the season against Mel Atherton. I don't, I don't play defense. I mean, I can. I don't play defense. I got told like four days before, Parker, we're going to put you in that corner. My goodness. We want you against Jurion. That's how that it is. That was a memorable game for you, that was, for him. That was fun. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's do it. I'm excited. I mean, I have no expectations. I'm a quarterback out here playing defense. And I, I did pretty good, actually, the first half. I don't think he had a touchdown yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then. I was doing good. I mean, it was, a, it was a shock. I remember the first play of the game, he came out, act like he was doing a round, just kind of dogged me into the ground. I'm like, all right, fine, we'll play like this. And then it was a good game. I got a couple good plays on him. One of my highlights that I put in my thing that season was, was me tossing him down and making a tackle. Mm -hmm. um, but then once the second part came around, I started cramping a little bit. He caught a slant route on me, and he did a little outside move. And then I got behind him, and then I grabbed my leg, and I couldn't catch up. And he caught a slant and took it for the house. Yeah, um, I remember that. And then, of course, he got that f head top on me in the end zone. Yes. I, I'm not going to downplay it. It was, a frick, it was a great catch. I mean, It was a great catch. It was a great catch, great, great route. Young Parker did his best. I just missed Made national it. news. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> hey, I made a couple newspapers. Press is press. So, I mean, he jumped up over me. I misplayed it. I mean, I didn't even know where he was. I was turning and watching the quarterback, and then I jumped early, or I don't even know if I jumped with both my feet. I just thought I could get my hand up there. I'm like, 
because most of the time if I play someone, that's all I need to do. Yeah. But I'm forgetting that this is Jerry on. He's a freak of nature, so he just got up over me. I'm pretty sure I did the splits in the air, but... Um, well, maybe some sometime down the line, <laughs> some ball game, or yeah. maybe in the league, you know. There's a lot of options now for people to go pro, but yeah. maybe you guys will go head up again. Yeah, I'll get my get back. And that clip will be available to ESPN. Yeah, it will. It'll, <laughs> we, it'll be out there. Just look it up. We, we got the behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, no, but that was, a, that was a crazy game. Definitely yeah. a, a memorable, one of those memorable catches for Jurion. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you, you got, you, Parker had a, you had a 75-yard touchdown? That game? Yes. It was, it was around there, yeah. I, I, was, I lined up in a, like a wing position. Uh, Nate was playing Q at the time. I lined up in wing. I sailed a block outside yes. the outside linebacker. He bit, opened a little hole for me, and I slipped past, caught a ball, like five-yard pass, and then I just outran the defense. And yeah. That was that, the first touchdown. That was the play that kind of woke us up, woke up everybody and, like, Okay, now we, we gotta we gotta we gotta watch Parker now. Yeah. Like he, he he's he's not backing down. He, no. He's gonna be something to watch. Yeah. So no, that's great, man. So uh, there's a lot of great memories. Obviously, senior season didn't go as well. No. Um, but when when you look back at, at how things kind of turn out, you know, talk about. First of all, it, it was frustrating to follow Parker because of. Um, we were always expecting like something to come out yeah. as far as, you know, his recruiting yeah. because everybody <laughs> was expecting it. And it's like, what is going know, on? Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. But talk about the frustration and, and, and how you kind of stayed yeah. locked in throughout that whole thing. Yeah. Like Cause it. there were some guys uh -huh. that were getting offers <laughs> that were like, how? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. You know? I know. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely something I've had to deal with for a while, um, kind of starting my junior year. Because I'm, I showed pretty diverse film my junior year. I mean, I played mm -hmm. a few five games in receiver. In the state finals, I had like 90 yards receptions in the first half. Um, but, yeah, it was pretty frustrating to think about because, I mean, I, I'll never I'll – never talk down about another player getting offers anything like that because I mean, but you can it's, now it's amazing yeah because <laughs> yeah. it's great I'm so happy it's cool to see and um but the thing was is I just felt like me athletically um of course you're going to compare yourself to other players and I'll compare myself to other players as well um I just felt like I could I should be here and it could have been because of the record that we had mm -hmm. um but a lot of the coaches that came and talked to me um especially recently is they're like, I'm, we missed you. Like, straight up, they're like, we missed you. I don't know how we missed you. We jumped over you guys. Like, I don't know how we missed you. And it's, it's so late in the recruiting cycle. This past couple months is that a lot of the scholarships are already out, and they don't know what to do with me now because I'm late. So here's the PWO, and I'm so grateful for that because now I get my chance to go out there and do yeah. what I know I can do. Um, they gave me that opportunity, and I'm so excited for it. Um, but, yeah, for me, like, staying in the headspace to – keep competing and kind of still believe in it it's just like I said like my goal growing up my whole life get to college and before my senior season me and my dad talked about it a lot is like if I have the season I know I'm gonna have then I should be in this place and of course we didn't have the season I know I was gonna have um, but I put on good tape like I had good tape for myself and uh, it was super frustrating to not get what I wanted but it kind of just put a chip on my shoulder in a way um, especially for this next next year and I'll talk about that in a second but for me if I think I'm I thought I was supposed to be here recruitment wise and I didn't get what I wanted but now I have this chip on my shoulder like okay there's all these schools now that like you talk to me here you talk to me this and you don't want me so that's fine that's cool but San Diego State did want me and they want me to compete at this level and they have big hopes for me and I'm planning to go do what I can do there and I'm just trying to get to that spot where I can kind of take that chip off my shoulder and get what I want um but yeah, I mean, I I just got my roommate too for Colorado. I mean, for San Diego State. Um, Bobby but you Shaw. you slipped there. You said Colorado. <laughs> no, not Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> they, they messed me up a little bit. But uh, Bobby Shaw. Bobby Shaw is my new roommate. Um, super. Bobby cool. Shaw. Where is he from? Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. okay uh, you guys okay. covered him a little bit. Yes. I think. Yeah. Um, but he transferred to Pittsburgh his senior year. Um, yeah, I got added to this like group chat. I was like, hey, can you guys pick a roommate between these? So one roommate out of all these 17 people or so. They're all freshman recruits. 
um, but none of them had numbers. Like there, it was just all random numbers to me. So I'm like, who are these people? I don't know any of them. So I just typed on the group, said, hey, can you just put your names in? And I started going down the list, texting people. And I got to Bobby. And uh, Bobby's also a PWL for San Diego State, which nice. is super cool. He also had one from, I believe, Oregon State. Um, but the thing I, I liked about Bobby is that um, we have the same kind of mentality when it comes to coming in, mm -hmm. um, chips on our shoulders, just keeping our head down, grinding. Um, that was cool to see because I'm going to be in a room with him and we're both going to want to train. We're both going to have the same idea. We want to earn our position. We want to earn our scholarship. We want to do all these things. And uh, I'm excited to be in that position with him. Same mentality. And I've had that mentality my whole life. Just if I can outwork the person next to me, then I'll be in a good place. And I feel like he has that same mentality. So I'm excited for that. Nice. So how did, kind of talk about the experience of how San Diego State came about. Yeah. Um, so I went to their uh, opening game last season against um, Ohio, and um, that was super cool since then. Even before that, my best buddy, um, this kid named Jackson, he, I took him to the game, and he was down there because he lives down there, and I've, I've been to San Diego a lot my whole life. And uh, I've loved the area, um, but the new stadium, Snapdragon Stadium, like really sh was super cool to me. Um, big stadium. I just love the, uh, all the stuff about it. And, but their whole coaching staff changed. I was in good contact with them, um, but it was kind of the same as all the other schools I was talking to. Like I got invited to their stuff. Um, coaches were talking to me and giving me good hopes and all this, but then it kind of just kind of slowed down a little bit. Same kind of things, just kind of keeping me there, but not really pulling the trigger. Um, and then when the new coaching staff changed, it was pretty quick. I mean, Sean, Coach Sean Lewis has done a great job recruiting-wise. And um, I think Coach Barton was brought on. He's a tight end assistant head coach, and he's done a great job recruiting too. And he texted me on, he followed me on Twitter I followed him back and I messaged him, hey coach, thanks for following me. You wanna check out my film? And he checked out my, he had already lost my film. That's when he followed me. And he's like, I love your film, man. I'm gonna, let's get in contact. So I gave him my number and he came down when he was in the Bay Area to come visit and uh, set up that. He went down to our bunker, talked to Coach Diaz Infante. Coach Diaz Infante has, has done a great job for me just because he knows the world and he's not, he's yeah. not, he's definitely not a quiet guy or shy guy. So he asks what he wants to ask. and. Um, he's been in all those coaches' shoes before, so there's nothing he can say where it's not going to seem weird. So he's in there kind of really advocating for me and making sure that I'm understanding what they're saying. He's kind of just mediating the conversation. Um, but like I said, he made such a good, Coach Barton made such a good impression on me. Um, and I knew from the get-go that he came in and told me, hey, Parker, we're going we're gonna to offer you this if once we get your grade checked out. They're, the grade lady was on like a... I forgot what she was on, ski week or something. She was seeing so she wasn't back in time. So I was waiting on that to get back. And I was texting him over and over again, hey, coach, has it got back yet? But once it got back, he called me. He's like, hey, Parker, your, your grades came through and you're good. Like, we're, nice. you're here. And I asked him maybe five times that call. So does this mean if I say I'm committed, I'm, I'm going to the school no matter what? Because you never know. I have to be super sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, and he's like, yeah, you're good. Like, you're locked in. I'm like, all right, cool. Like I was already ready to commit. Like I would have committed right there on the call. He's like, take your time, talk to your folks. I'm like, okay, I got you. And I went home, told my dad, told my mom, all that. Um, but I told them before, cause it had been a little buildup from when I met him. I knew I was going to commit. And uh, the next day I committed and I texted, I texted the other coaches that I've been in contact with, Wyoming, uh, San Jose State, just out of courtesy for them. Just like, hey, I'm, I'm planning on going here. UNLV was a cool opportunity, but um, like I said, it's all about relationships. And the only time I ever really had talked to them was when Coach Marion came and offered mm -hmm. me at school. Other than that, he hadn't gotten back to me over text, wasn't spawning. Um, coach Hogg, the running back coach at Wyoming, good, I had a pretty good connection with him. He talked to me a lot. Um, it just wasn't the place for me going to Wyoming. I couldn't see myself. And then San Jose State wanted me as a safety again they I, did they wanted me even the new staff wanted me as safety which i find weird like i understand i'm an yeah. athlete and i have the build but i don't have any film there at, at the position at that's all that's true yeah and i'm no film there but all my position is me running and all this stuff and i i, I i'm not i've seen i watch San, San Jose state like i watch their games a lot and i've seen the people that they recruit and i'll see this and i don't understand that part of it like how yeah do you, you got joseph you, Bay, you free compare safety. me 
Jalen Thomas, exactly. and then they also want and you. You there. want me, like you, com- and then you <laughs> compare me to these offensive guys you guys have, and you compare me to, and I, I think highly of myself. Like I, I feel like I could go in and pretty much compete offensively anywhere you put me, besides line, obviously. Um, so that just wasn't gonna work for me. But San Diego State, like I said, built that great communication. Talked to my dad for a long time. And my dad said a funny thing on the call San Diego State. I don't think he knew if I was listening, but I was right there on the door just listening in because <laughs> I was super interested. Um, but they were talking about football season. My dad's like, you know what, if you want to watch film, go check out the Reardon game. Because the Reardon game, and the coach immediately was like, oh, yeah, uh, they have a lot of Division One talent on that team. Yep. And my dad, being my dad, loves me, super confident. He goes, yeah, Parker scored six touchdowns against all that talent. <laughs> and then the coaches, like, started laughing, and it was, it was a funny interaction. Um, but the fact that he called my dad and called me again after I said I was going to commit, he's like, let me know if you need me to call anybody else. Super great. And my visit, I just visited there. And um, mm. I told coach that I hadn't visited, I haven't seen the campus yet. Like, I've, I've never seen the campus. And he's like, oh, that's fine. So I went on the visit, saw the stuff. But when the rest of the kids who were on the visit went to the practice, they took me out on the golf cart and showed me the campus and all that because nice. I hadn't seen it before. Just talked to me about it. And they were super, showed me super great hospitality. And it was just super good and just got me super excited. And I caught, talked to Coach Lewis about the position, playing quarterback and coming in. They had just lost someone. So there's more opening for quarterback. And um, he wants me to come in and compete. They see me as an athlete, but they know I love quarterback. Yeah. And the thing is, I wanted to make sure they knew I'm open-minded because I don't want to close any doors for myself. But I'm going to come in and compete at the highest level as quarterback. And I think highly of myself. And I'm, I'm training a lot right now, more than I've ever trained before at the position, just to build that confidence. And all my coaches are behind my back on it. But I made sure that with them, if I don't do what I think I'm going to do at quarterback, they know very well that they can move me to receiver Mm -hmm. um, or running back and I can compete there. They know I'm at my athleticism. So my idea is if I come in as a Q, I can move. But if I come in as a receiver, I'm never going to see that position again. Quarterback's a hard position to let go of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I know Danny Niu from Sarah, he's going to San Diego State. Yeah. Chase and Jackson, I believe, got an offer. Yeah, both of them, yeah. Yeah, and so so did Kingston. Yeah. From uh, St. Francis. Yeah. So, wow, that, that would be a wild reunion. That would be crazy. <laughs> if it all pans out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's Ch- awesome, Chase man. and Jackson are blowing up right now. Yeah, 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 Kingston. they are. Kingston just got another one. Uh, UNLV. UNLV, yeah. yeah. So it's, They're doing it's, great. I think it's happening for the Bay. Uh, a lot more guys are getting uh, opportunities, um, which is great. And, you know, I'm, I'm super happy for you because when, when we've been waiting for that, post and <laughs> and when it finally came through it's like yeah i know it's so super cool yeah um it, before we wrap up the all-star game uh the gsf all-star game I, I remember right when we were planning the first one you were a junior we already had you in mind the way we built the all-star game is is based on the qb so parker was our gsf seven on seven qb and we definitely wanted him to be the QB for the All-Star game, and then the other one was Brooks yeah. to be the QB for the other team. He was our Heroes QB in that first year. Um, but you mentioned grades. Uh, we had a, a 3.0 minimum GPA requirement to play in the All-Star game. Um, and it wasn't just the All-Star game. It was the All-Star experience. Uh, but just, I, I just want to get your feedback. Be honest. What, what, what was the, the experience like uh, being part of that, that whole uh, journey? For getting the All-Star to, game? Yeah, getting, getting to play with, to play with all the reuniting guys with some guys, yeah. finally playing against some guys. I well, I mean, like I said, it was it was super fun. I mean, playing with Huncho and Bo and all that, like I never got to play with them, Krongo. I never got to play yeah. with them in that sense. And it was it was just super cool, like practicing with them. Seeing them in pads is a lot different than seeing them in a sevens uniform. Um, and they were, just, I mean, I thought highly of them in sevens, but they're just as good or better when it comes to putting on the pads which was super, super cool. And the, I think the coolest part for me was me reuniting with Dante in the um, pad sense, 11-on-11, 11 because 11, he was my Pop Warner coach. And uh, first coach I called when I decided to become a quarterback was Dante, and he came to the local park oh. and started running stuff with me, working on play actions, reading, and all that stuff. So he kind of brought me into that aspect of it. So it really all branched from Dante. Dante gave me confidence. Dante has believed in me for a long time, too. Um, so he gave me all that and coming back to be able to play with him in 11 on 11 cents where he just wants me to do what he knows I can do 
Um, it was super cool. He came to my football games even, and I'd be on the sideline, like, getting ready to go in, and i hear Parker, Parker, and I look to my left. He's on the sideline, <laughs> like, at my Bellarmine games, and I don't know how he got there. He probably just acted like a coach with his jawstring he, back. He's got a pass. He's got a pass. Yeah, he's got a pass. Don't worry. He's a GSF staff. Yeah, and he's <laughs> he was just chilling there, and he's like, Parker, don't think too much. Just do your thing. Like, be an athlete. Like, yeah. take this game over. Do your thing. And um, he's been that guy for me my whole life, and being able to do that with him and the All-Star game was awesome. And one last time being able to play with the WCAL guys again against yeah. them, especially Sarah, was super cool. And all these other people that I've never met before, like that Wilcox lineman, like, that's a big kid. I have not played against Moose. him. Not played Our against next guess. that guy. Yeah, he, he's a legit ball player. And, uh, he's going to what, UW right now? He's going to UW. He UW. was going he was to Arizona, Arizona and then but then got the coaching UW. change. Yeah, um, that is super cool. Um, but, yeah, playing against all these new people that I've never met before, um, Super, super cool. And also the um, Palo Alto receiver that was on my team. Azeen, Jason, yes. Super cool kid, great receiver. He's going to San Jose State now, right? I believe so, yeah. yeah. On a walk-on. Yeah, like I said, just building relationships. Um, that's the biggest thing I think I've built on my senior year is the relationship aspect of football. Like I said, I'm, I'm a, I was a quiet kid and all that. Um, but when it came to, like, summer and recruitment and all that stuff, I really had to open up going to talk to new coaches, talk to new players. I mean, every – you can't have success without having relationships and all that stuff. And that's like the biggest thing, being loyal to people, having good relationships, all that stuff comes from somewhere. Um, and that's what this does all made me do. I've built relationships with new coaches. I've built relationships with new players all around. I can mess, I'm, I'm working on throwing with uh, Jeremiah right now, like working, he's texting me on Instagram, getting oh, stuff nice. set up. I work out with guys all the time. Um, but yeah, it's just having the diversity in your friends and the people that trust you and you can trust um, that's the biggest thing I say take advantage of if I was to give any advice is I was gonna ask you yeah. like about your, your advice to the younger guys yeah I mean for advice just take advantage of like every opportunity that's not necessarily just athletically like on the football field when you get the ball I'm talking about like if you're in a room with a coach and they're asking you to ask questions ask questions like it it doesn't hurt you there is no bad question and when you're at camps with these coaches like talk to them in the way that obviously more respectfully, but talk to them like, like you're generally interested. Like be generally interested in other people. Like that's the biggest thing. Like you can't just go to ask questions off a script and be like to these coaches and like have the same question you ask. Like, oh, how big is your campus? Like what are the hobbies of your players? Like be generally interested in what you're doing. If you're not generally interested, then push it to the side. Like you do other things you want to do. And that same thing with friends and all the people on your teammates, be interested in what they want, be interested in what they need. And, uh, that's the biggest thing. My mom's helped me a lot with that. Just be interested in other people and they'll be interested in you. And it doesn't create fake relationships. It creates genuine good relationships um, that'll last forever. That'll help you out forever. Um, but yeah, just build relationships. That advice right there, guys. Play that over and over and over and, <laughs> and try to do it. Yeah. Um, you're going to be graduating. You're yeah. going to be... I already missed you on the field, but, you know, <laughs> talk about some of the people that have made a difference in your life and and you know you get to say your thank yous to, yeah. to wrap things up yeah um i'm graduating i want to say thank you to my teammates first and foremost like joe fuqua um ben coulter i can't mention all you guys because it's going to take a long time but all you guys have been you guys are like my brothers and all that stuff and joe man like you're probably the best football player like i've ever played against played with or against and uh, sometimes I think I think you're better than you think you are. I think that's the case with everybody. He's like one of those players that you know yeah. he's a great baller, but he's like, ah, it's just just my hobby. Um, but yeah, that, that was my biggest thing. I was sad after the season thinking of just Joe, not being able to play with Joe for a while. Um, big shout Joe out to Fuqua. Oh, yeah. okay. Big shout out to one of my best friends, my brother Zay. You're at Branham now. He just got his first offer, Air Force. That's right, yeah. Congratulations, yes. dude. Um, he's going to ball out at Branham. He's a great football player. Um, he became one of my best friends recently. Um, big shout out to my coaches this season. It's really tough coming in to coach a whole new football team, especially mm -hmm. a varsity one who have, have all these different coaches. It's, it's really tough and I have a lot of respect for them to come in and stick with us. And I can notice them trying to improve the program already, two a days now, already starting the sevens team with you guys, um, yep. all this stuff they're, they're creating this. And I have a lot of respect for that. Um, of course, thank you to my parents. I love them a lot. They do so much for me. Thank you to my grandparents. My Nama comes out to every game. My long granddaddy, my grandpa and grams, um, all my friends who have helped me. 
Um, but yeah, thanks to all that. My uncle can't can't leave my uncle Shane out of it. <laughs> my uncle Shane has been my like has been my like I'd say like manager pretty much throughout this whole recruiting That's process. Right. When it comes to talking to coaches, when it comes to setting up camps and traveling with me to sevens tournaments and all that, he's just he's been so helpful for me, helping me work out at the gym, all this stuff. Um, super great. But yeah, thanks to all you guys. Yeah. If you were to go back and talk to young Parker, yeah, as a freshman Parker, yeah, what would you say to him? Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> ah, I would say, I would say, for me, when it came, I've always worked hard, I've always trained, but when it came to like, I think I made a big shift my junior and senior year. Um, I didn't realize how much like it actually demanded to become where I want to be my freshman and sophomore year. I don't think anybody does really. You kind of realize that once you get to other kids who are doing it and you don't want to be less than them. Um, but for me, I would tell myself, you have like a goal, right? Like a, a, like a line, I'd say, that you want to do and your goals at the end of it and like all the extra little things that are kind of sidetracks or distractions that don't help you get to that goal. Um, give that less attention, I'd say. Anything like as little as like going out, hanging out with your friends too long or doing things like that. It's just like, you have so much time for that. And um, this might be contradictory to what people say, live your life, be a kid and all that. But like, you have a little amount of time to showcase what you can do. And I'm not gonna, my recruitment, I'm not gonna put it all on my, my situation at Bell or anything like that. Like, it's on me too. Like, I didn't do what I wanted to do. I didn't, I, I underplay what I wanted to play. Um, and I think I gave too much time to the like distractions and stuff like that. And I didn't, my junior, senior, I didn't as much, but realistically, like, I would just say focus, dude. Like, you need to focus more, really look at what you want to do and don't push things off. Like when I was younger, I'd be like, okay, next week, I'm gonna start doing this. I'm gonna start do it, like, mm. do it now, man. Like, you don't have too much time. Like, I'm at, I'm at a senior now, I'm graduating in a, a couple of weeks and I'm, it just comes so quick. Um, but yeah, just less distractions and focus on what you want to do. Because I'm where I want to be now, of course, but it wasn't exactly what I was thinking coming into high school. Um, and it comes down to the circumstance and luck, but it also comes down to me. And I put a lot of it on myself, and I always continue to put stuff on myself. But, but yeah, just focus. Focus. Get sports focus. Get sports focus. <laughs> <laughs> well, Parker, man, thank you for making the time. I'm sure I'll see you again before you leave, but... You know, maybe when you get to the pro level, there you go. You know, come back. We'll do this somewhere where you know we'll, we'll have a better setup. <laughs> Al, this is pretty sick. Yeah, it's pretty sick. This I, I, I'm, awesome. I, I'm, I'm happy with with the setup. But yeah, yeah, thank you for for being part of Get Sports Focus. Yeah. Obviously, we're a big fan. We'll always be a big fan. And uh, yeah, just keep in touch, man. Yeah, thank Looking you. Looking forward to following the journey. Yeah, thank you. You guys helped me so much. Like, <laughs> you guys have been a great connection for me. You yeah. friends. You guys helped me so much. So big shout out to you guys. Like, there's nobody in my football journey that has helped me like, exposure-wise and just setting me up with things that I have never been exposed to before like you guys have. So in all this kind of stuff that we're doing like right now, and I've done it a couple of times with you guys, it's like, like I said, it's opened me up a lot. I mean, if you look at my first time talking, yes. <laughs> if you look back at that first, I don't know, I would, I would shake. Yeah. I'm, I'm on my calls like, fidgeting the whole time, like moving my head, but you guys- I can, have, I can hear his heartbeat oh, yeah. on the mic. <laughs> Those were stressful times. Like I had to prepare. Like he used to send me questions to think about before. Yeah. Now it's just, I, you guys helped me a lot. It's just a conversation now. Conversation. Well, that's because I'm so comfortable with you guys. Cause you guys, you guys are really like my family now. It's like super cool to see, but like I said- No, I love that, man. So, so uh, this, this media training right here is gonna work out in, at the next level. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. My friends laugh about those times. Dude, it's not fair. Your media trade. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly, right? Big shout out to Alf. So. Well, so uh, one one bonus question: What are you planning to major when you when you get to yeah. SDSU? I'm majoring in business, okay. business entrepreneurship, and I'm gonna minor in psych. I think so. Nice. I, I want to eventually get into like real estate and kind of my own thing. Maybe open up my own kind of thing like that. Beautiful. Um, I was gonna do like sports med or something, but I think this kind of gives me more opportunities branching wise. Yeah. Um, psych, really important. The mental, every, like I said, relationships, big thing. Psych helps you out with that, so. Nice. Well, when, when, when you're a high roller, I'm gonna hit you up for sponsorship. There you go, <laughs> I got you. Parker Thread, everybody. Thank you. All right, man, great job. <laughs> that was fun.